North America's northern plains are one of the continent's most beautiful landscapes. In between 3300 and 1600 years ago, it was the home to the people of what archaeologists call the Pelican Lake Complex. This cultural complex falls into the Late Plains Archaic Period, which is characterized by the use of notched projectile points, as opposed to lancelet or stem points, and the use of the atlatl. Archaeological materials diagnostic of the Pelican Lake Complex can be found in the Northern Plains in the provinces and states of Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Colorado. Pelican Lake points are medium-sized bifaces characterized by open corner notches that form barbs. The length of these points ranges from 30 to 50 millimeters on average. There is slight variation in the shape of blade edges and bases, being straight or slightly convex or concave. Knife river flint was a very common material for these points to be made from. The sources for knife river flint are located in Mercer and Dunn counties of North Dakota, although geologically similar sources of stone exist elsewhere in the Northern Plains. Other types of stone used to make Pelican Lake points included obsidian from the Yellowstone region, Swan River chert, quartzite, agates, and a variety of other chert types. These points were used as spear tips to be thrown as projectiles from an atlatl, also known as a spear thrower. In fact, they've been found archaeologically still hafted for this purpose. At the Wedding of the Waters cave site in Wyoming, four atlatl dart foreshafts were recovered. One of these foreshafts still held a Pelican Lake point bound in place by sinew. The stone I am napping my point from is Knife River Flint. I went to North Dakota to collect this material in the summer of 2017. This material occurs as secondary deposits in tabular and flattened irregular shapes.
Along with the specific style of point that they made, the Pelican Lake complex was distinguished from the rest of the Light Plains Archaic by a significant increase in bison hunting. These bison were hunted using bison jumps and bison pounds. Bison jumps are cliffs or sinkholes that bison were intentionally stampeded into, the fall injuring, maiming, or even killing these animals. Those animals that survived the fall with only injuries, which is more common than outright dying, were easy targets for people using the atlatl. Although bison bones dominate the faunal record at Pelican Lake sites, the people used a broad variety of food resources and exploited multiple habitat zones. People from the Pelican Lake complex used shelters now evidenced by circular rings of stone. Their fire hearths were basin-shaped and lined with stones, which probably helped to reflect heat upwards. People during this period of time also used rock shelters and caves for shelter.
When notching a point, mistakes can easily occur. This notch was abruptly widened when I removed a flake from an improper platform or with too much force, causing the barb to be partially removed as part of the flake. The mistake was not so severe as to ruin the point, but it did require me to change my approach and my intended design. A unique aspect of the Pelican Lake complex is their burial pattern. Throughout time, the dead on the northern plains were rarely buried in subsoil burials. Based on ethnographic accounts of plains tribes, the dead were often buried above ground on platforms, in trees, high hills, and in other means. When burials actually occurred, these graves appeared to be very shallow. However, with the Pelican Lake complex, there appears to have been a specific subsurface burial pattern. The Highwood River site is an example of one of these burials. Located on a prairie overlooking the Highwood River Valley in Alberta, this site is one of the few well-researched burials of this type. Plowing from agricultural activity disturbed some of the artifacts and bones at the site, but also led to its discovery by amateur collectors who contacted professionals to examine the site. The Archaeological Survey of Alberta conducted a complete excavation of this burial. It turned out that not one, but two individuals were contained in this burial. Along with the skeletal remains, three lithic artifacts, one piece of copper, a number of various imported shell beads, 11 perforated grizzly bear teeth, and at least 66 drilled bison incisors and canines were recovered as well. One of those three lithic artifacts was a Pelican Lake point made from Knife River Flint. The grave was also sprinkled with red ochre, which is powdered hematite. After examination by bioarchaeologists, it appears both individuals were children around the age of 10 at time of death. The burial seems to be a reburial with defleshing having occurred before internment. <laughs> 